Hi everyone, welcome to my video where I'll be explaining and demonstrating Rayleigh-Taylor instability. Like with any instability, Rayleigh-Taylor has its typical pattern. It can be easily recognized by its mushroom or even pasta-like appearance. We can see this instability nearly everywhere. For example, it can be seen in the air at vertical temperature inversions and in explosions and volcanic eruptions where the inner air warms and intrudes into a colder layer above, forming a mushroom cloud. It can be seen in space, for example supernovas, and in the ocean where the salt fingers are produced by Rayleigh Taylor instability. I was actually able to recreate salt fingers by simply layering warm salt water on top of cold fresh water, as you will see in my experiment. But first let's give a brief account how it starts and develops. First of all, the instability is a result of a denser fluid injecting or intruding into a less denser one. It usually starts from a quasi-stationary, stagnant, or non-moving but unstable state. The best way to imagine this is through a setup for the typical Rayleigh-Taylor instability experiment. The denser fluid is frozen or held immovable on top of a less dense fluid. This can be achieved by playing with difference in heat and salt diffusivity. Cold water is more dense than warm water. So if initially a warmer, less dense but saltier water is placed on top of a colder, more dense but less salty water, it would remain in stable condition until it loses enough heat for that top layer to become denser than the bottom layer. At a certain instant, the position of the cold, densified, saltier water would become unstable, and then the instability starts. Now how does it actually develop? Why do these patterns look so cool? Also, why do they look random while spreading into a somewhat organized way? These can be answered in simple dynamics principles. Imagine a wave or any random perturbation passing through the surface. It will cause an increase in pressure at the boundary at a point of depression relative to the points on the same surface around it. The interface will start bulging up at this point and the change in pressure will cause the water to sink until a point of equilibrium can be reached, but bringing more and more denser water towards the same point and replacing the lighter water to the side. This increases the gradient at the tip of the finger or protrusion and allows the surface to develop into stunningly remarkable patterns. Despite of the importance of the Rayleigh-Taylor instability, it is not usually included in undergraduate courses because it requires rigorous mathematics or numerical methods to determine its solutions. However, this is the governing differential equation of our problem, where the interface between the two densities is on the z-axis, rho is the density of the fluid, W is the velocity, G is the gravitational acceleration, K is the wave number, and N is the eigenvalue. From this, one can determine the following eigenvalue solution, where rho 1 is the density of the bottom layer and rho 2 is the density of the top layer, and therefore solve for the instability between two fluids. This eigenvalue equation determines the stability. The system is unstable if the denser fluid is above the less dense fluid, so if rho 2 is greater than rho 1 and it is stable if the less dense fluid is above the denser fluid, so if rho 2 is less than rho 1. This physically makes sense, and we'll see this in the demonstration. The system also depends on the wave number, and this is something that could be tested by carrying out this experiment with different container sizes. Now let's finally move on to the demonstration. Only a few of them were successful because it was hard to achieve initial stability. I used ice cubes to help create this layer as you will see in the last clip where the green dye was used. Here you can see mushroom-like structures appearing at the surface between the two liquids.
It would be interesting to experiment with different densities, effective diffusion rates, viscosity, and shape and size, and even depth of the containers. However, this would require a better instrumentation. Generally, I came across some difficulties. To do this experiment the right way, I needed to set a stable stratification across the surface that would turn into unstable, causing instability and sinking. To set a rate density difference, you would need a more accurate measurement of temperature and mass of salt added per liter of liquid. To make it even better, you would need a way to build a top layer without releasing it and then let it go so all parts of it act and be affected the same way. Not being able to do this, I had to simplify the design and come up with other methods like adding ice cubes allowing to keep the lower layer dense and also allowing to distribute the injected denser dye layer more evenly. Here are a few references and acknowledgements to finish off. Thank you for watching my video on Rayleigh Taylor instability. I hope you enjoyed.